Hey everybody, SussyFips here, and for this video, we're going to go somewhere no man has ever gone inside the League client. But before we do that, I'd like to mention that this video is being recorded on the live version of 6.2. So any changes made from 6.2 to whenever you're watching this video might not have any effect on what I'm saying currently. And today I would like to discuss a game design philosophy that I have that is within a game, all the mechanics of a game should have their place within that game. And to me, summoner spells are currently one part of League of Legends that are not balanced within themselves. They might be balanced within the game, but there are definitely summoner spells like Flash and Ignite uh, that are just head and shoulders above the rest. So I would just like to state what I feel would be some pretty cool changes to some of the underwhelming summoner spells that might bring them into the forefront of the meta. So starting off with clarity, some of you probably never even knew this was a summoner spell, uh, and that's because it restores 40% of champion max mana, and also restores allies for 40% of their maximum mana. Now, the problem with this summoner spell right now is that Champions that have a lot of mana problems are either balanced to not really have the largest effect on them, except around how you would uh, play it, so like it's a playstyle thing, or there's just so many mana items that are so strong right now. ADs have Mura Mana and Essence Reaver, or even Triforce for a lot of them, just having an extra Sheen item is just enough mana to get you through a lot of the game. And then APs have their freaking Chalice and Morello's tanks have Roa, Ro Righteous Glory, anything with Catalyst is, has got mana on it with the mana regen from the Catalyst proc. So mana isn't a really big issue. So Clarity is just kind of like saying, hey, are you kind of not having mana problems because you're level 9 and still haven't packed for some reason? Well, here's Clarity. Instead, what I would like to see Clarity do used for is a counterplay to blue buff. Not every mid laner is going to get his blue buff when the opposing mid laner is going to get their blue buff. Or vice versa for, you know, top lane or bot lane or whoever you're giving your dang blue buff to. And this change might also be good on junglers, depending if you're just super farm heavy. But in, in today's meta at 6.2, it's not mana for junglers that at least I play isn't a big deal. Or mana I haven't, I haven't seen mana on junglers be a big deal. But I would like to see Clarity just become a mini blue buff for 20 seconds. And it go, hey, your zigs against Zareth. Or you're literally any champion that needs mana against a champion that also needs mana. But that champion, the champion you're up against, got blue buff and you didn't. And now they can just push the wave into you and out trade you and out sustain you because they have blue buff and you don't. And you have to play around your mana costs when they're more liberal with their spells. So you take clarity, and for the next 20 seconds it says, "Hey, here's a bunch of uh, here's fat mana regen. Here you go, just take it." It doesn't have the cooldown reduction blue buff has, but you can just shove the wave back. So you can compete in just, you know, wave clear so they can't just shove it under your turret so you can't back because you're going to miss the CS and mix the XP. Or you can just uh, try to out-trade them with the mana you have and you can poke them down and force them to back so that you can back too. So then you can get your mana item or you can get your next item that says, hey, you know what, I don't have to start Chalice on this champion because Clarity low levels is just going to carry me through until I can get my late game mana item and I can just take an NLR and I can build into Zhonya's or Ludens and Clarity will just help me scale. Now moving on to Ghost. Ghost is good on some champions like uh, Olaf, Shivana, Hecarim. Uh, Ghost is pretty good on some Nasus players take it um, and that's just because they their kit synergizes really well with the movement speed, as is. But most champions will take Flash over Ghost, and some people take Flash and Ghost. 
but that has to say more to Flash than Ghost, but to me, Ghost would be really good is if it was as it is, where it's kind of underwhelming, or it was really strong, but it depended on the, like, the point in the game. So, if you had Ghost stack up to two times, and s but have, like, the same cooldown for each stack, so say you make the cooldown three minutes. Uh, you use Ghost, and after three minutes, you get your first stack. And after, you know, another three minutes, you get your second stack. And at two stacks, you can double tap Ghost and say, Hey, I'm now moving at... Like, the Ghost speed will be doubled, is what I mean. It, it, stacks, it stacks linearly. So this 27% would turn into 52%. Bonus move speed for 10 seconds. And... That would be really, really strong if you had two stacks, like Olaf, or, you know, just Darius, even, who doesn't really take Ghost, or Garen, who I don't see a lot of players take Ghost on Garen, taking this Ghost, and at two stacks, they double tap it, they just straight up run after your carries in a team fight mid game because that's where you're going to have two stacks is in the mid game, or you can haul ass down bot lane because you didn't take teleport, but you can still make a play and go, hey, I just push, I just killed my top laner, pushed in the wave, I'm going to look towards mid. He's not going to expect me to double flat, double ghost and just run in and catch him off guard, and it'd be really strong in the mid game. But it's also saying, hey, early game, you're kind of giving up a summoner spell so you can let this ghost stack up, and it's kind of saying hey, you're going to have to put off what you have now so you can get something more later. I think that at a really cool mechanic to summoner spells as a whole, it's kind of you having to make decisions, not, not necessarily split-second playmaking decisions, or, you know, this is going to help me win this trade right now, but it's going to say, hey, I'm going to need this later on in a team fight, so let me just save this ghost. I think that'd be really cool. Uh, moving on to Barrier. Barrier is so disappointing to me because Barrier is one of the only summoner spells that isn't consistent. And by that I mean you can use Barrier and have it do nothing uh, compared to other summoner spells. There are other summoner spells that will do that. You can hit heal and take no damage after the heal, but the thing is you're still going to get the move speed boost to either chase someone down, which doesn't work all that often, or you're still going to get the movement speed boost to kite back, which helps more. And in trades, heal is really good. Where in barrier, for barrier, yes, you're either you're gonna have that extra 25 health to 110 health depending on your champion level. Which this this is overheal by the way. So that's you know an extra auto or so depending on the champion at whatever point in time the game is. So, but the problem with barrier is it only lasts for two seconds to me. So that's saying, oh, I got hit with CC. And instead of being able to use barrier ideally and block a bunch of damage while I'm in the CC, uh, I can hit barrier and then have it just nothing happen. They don't use any other spells, and I block no damage. And then, because it only lasts two seconds, when the CC is over and my barrier falls off, I'm still standing in what is basically the same spot. And I basically just blew a summoner spell, and I don't have something like heal exhaust or you know ignite teleport to get me out of there or to help me pressure something else uh, this is a summoner spell that doesn't apply pressure um, like a lot of other summoner spells do so it'd be really cool for me if the barrier was a permanent shield and by that I mean you hit it and it goes on its uh, on its cooldown whatever you know the cooldown for this type of mechanic would be um, you would hit it and you get that 115 health and you keep that 115 health until you take the damage required to pop the bubble to pop that shield and it, it gives this interesting mechanic to where if you're good enough in lane or you're just not trading in lane and you pop barrier and you have that 115 health um, you can just hang on to it and it still becomes basically like saying I don't it's basically saying I have this summoner spell and it's kind of always in effect. Now, what I would also like it to do is if you hit it again and say you still have that shield because you weren't in these trades or whatever, or you weren't, you know, taking a lot of damage or for whatever reason, you still have a portion of the shield, it would refill 
your shield up to the maximum of whatever that level is. It wouldn't stack. That would make it kind of crazy. Have a freaking Karthus just sit on fountain ulting people after level 6 and have Barrier and just spamming it every 3 minutes and walk out with 1800 health at 36 minutes and be like, hey, you can't kill me. That'd be kind of crazy. But I think that mechanic would kind of be... It would give Barrier a counterplay, which Barrier really is lacking. And it would give it some more consistency. It would also give something that this game really doesn't have, and that's counterplay to Ignite. Yay! They tried to make Heal a counterplay to Ignite, so they, they recognized at one point in the development process that Ignite is kind of strong and has zero counterplay within the summoner spells at least, where there's counterplays for all the other summoner spells within summoner spells. If you followed me, that was uh, some sort of tangent that was a black hole about a tan- it's- sorry. But it would, Barrier would offer Counterplay to Ignite, because now, if someone ignites you and you hit Barrier, you're not going to die after two seconds because your, the rest of your shield falls off, you only have 45 health remaining, the next tick of Ignite just kills you. No, your Barrier lasts, and you just eat the damage from Ignite. I think that'd be really cool. And even you could even, you know, hit, and, and it wouldn't be a straight counter because you could hit Barrier take some extra damage on top of the ignite, like if they freaking ignite autoed you, you could still die to the ignite. And I, I just think that would give Barrier more consistency. Now, going over to Cleanse. I, not, I don't really see Cleanse being taken by the majority of players. It's taken by a lot of high elo players that are depending on their mechanics to win them trades or win them team fights. And Cleanse is basically a... a a thing that allows mechanics to be exploited because CC is something that uh, will stop mechanics from happening so you know vein player with good mechanics gets hit by CC or a morgue binding or you know Ari charm who cares about their mechanics they can't do anything and cleanse will reset that now not all good players have those kind of mechanics that just says I'm better than whoever I'm going up against. So I would like cleanse to be changed in one of two ways and that's make it kind of underwhelming but spammable or pretty strong but with a longer uh, you know, uh, cooldown. So I would like to see the remove all hard CC um, on like a 25, 35 second cooldown. I think that'd be really cool. You get hit by a morgue binding, you cleanse it. I mean, your cleanse won't be up for the next one, or maybe even the next two morgue bindings, or RE charms, or Lux bindings, or all the star headbutt pulverized combos, and you can still just, you know, get wrecked by CC when your cleanse is down, but it will remove all hard CC from you. And that would make it pretty cool and pretty usable at most elos and you can really take away trades and lanes that way. The other thing I would I th thought would be pretty cool is if you made it like a five minute like a flash or a teleport type cooldown and you took you gave it a 30% move speed and it says yo I, I say screw your CC and I'm out of here or screw your CC and I'm chasing you down and it's going to I'm going to get something out of it. Make it so it's going to give you get you something out of it for using it, like a teleport, or a flash typically does. But for something like that, I would say remove the incoming disables by 65% for three seconds. Remove that mechanic. Because if you're up against two people in that situation anyway, uh, cleanse might not be the summoner spell for that type of situation. Um, just as a mechanic, uh, uh, as it is, you know, conceptually. Now, the red-headed stepchild of the pack, the one that people don't even know exists, the one that probably shouldn't exist in its current state, which is why it's up next, is Claire frickin' Voyance, man. Claire Voyance. What is this? It's a shittier blue trinket with longer range. It's basically saying, oh, hey, uh, do you want to you want to see something? Uh, you don't necessarily get to see champions. It's like the price is right. It's, uh, you want to you wanna see behind what's door number one? 
Uh, it could be, um, you know, a car, or it could be uh, just a blue buff. Nobody's on blue buff, it's just blue buff sitting there. I think clairvoyance, especially in a meta where they literally just gutted green wards, and they gutted vision pretty much as a whole, and they have it relying so much on trinkets, is if you had a summoner spell on a low cooldown, like three minutes, um, that said, here is a free blue ward for the next 90 seconds. And you could drop it anywhere on the map, and it's going to be invisible. It'll have the 1 HP hit thing that blue wards do, and it's go. it'll be like you can sweep it, and it, you can see it like if it's in turret range, and you can't teleport on it, because that'd be crazy. But it gives you this extra vision, and you're saying, I forego having exhaust this incredibly strong summoner spell that's very good in trades, that is very good in team fights, that is very good at any point in the game. I'm going to give this up for clairvoyance so that I have the knowledge. Instead of the pressure, I have the knowledge to work around the enemy's pressure. And that's what clairvoyance should be. It should be counterplay to the straight up pressure type summoner spells like teleport and exhaust, even, even flashes like that. I think that'd be a really cool change to Clairvoyance. Now, in the current state, I'd like to see Flash get changed because no matter how you look at it, Flash will always be stronger than almost any mechanic at, in, in some situations uh, with the way it is now. If you look at it and you literally buffed every single summoner spell except Flash, uh, Flash would still be stronger in some situations, which is the crazy thing. Uh, so I would like to see Flash not be able to pass through terrain. And that does a couple things. One, you're not taking it for some, like, the, the big reason that you take Flash is because it offers so much pressure and it's so much escape and it also offers so much mobility. At m many portions within the map, you can flash over a wall and you can gain, you know, six, 500 to 600 units of movement over an enemy. And that could really, you know, hurt that enemy if they're trying to chase you. Or, and, or it could really hurt them if you're just trying to catch up to them too. It's such a strong mechanic that you can flash over walls. If you couldn't flash over all walls, it would still be strong against... Um, longer range attacks that a lot of summoner spells aren't. Um, Ghost against these long range attacks um, is fairly good, but say you get Jin ultied, you hit your Ghost and Jin ult still slows you for 80% and you still get hit with the next two bullets and you still die or they still just catch you anyway. Heal um, is really... Heal, Exhaust, Ignite um, are really only good in these short range situations. Teleport's good long range, but I mean that's really long range. I'm talking about, you know, long range. That eh, kind of long range. And Flash would be really good, and you could still be dodging the CC, you could still use it to out-trade people because your dodging abilities are CC. You can still use it to uh, gap close, um, like, you know, Flash Cocoon, or Flash Nasus Q, and still, you know, it would still be viable, and you could still, like, and again, if Jin ulted you, but you couldn't pass through terrain, you could still flash the first bullet and run out of the ulti range, or the ulti cone zone, whatever it is. And it would still be viable, in my opinion. But if you did this, I think it would put all the summoner spells on more of an equal footing, and people could be able to say, I like playing this champion with these summoner spells because it matches my play style this way and I don't have to worry about all this extra pressure from people who are just playing other champions with summoner spells that don't necessarily make their play style unique on that champion. It just makes them stronger because of the summoner spells are just stronger than the ones you have right now. So to me, that would be really cool to see. Um, I don't necessarily think that these are the only changes that could be made to make summoner spells really cool, but I just wanted to put something out there that said, hey, 
I would like it if these things are changed, and these would be some cool ideas how. So I hope this inspired you to look at this game in a new way and say, hey, I could do this or this, or if this was like this, we could do this. And I could say this 40 more times, but I'm just going to end the episode. Thanks for watching.